the default mode network, rational emotive behavior therapy, and the treatment of addictions. The default mode network is a set of brain regions that are active when a person is not engaged in a specific task, but rather in a state of rest or introspection. It includes the medial prefrontal cortex, the posterior cingulate cortex the precuneus, and the medial temporal lobes. It is involved in self-referential processing, memory, emotion, and social cognition. Addictive behaviors are characterized by compulsive drug-seeking and drug-taking, despite negative consequences. These behaviors are influenced by various factors, such as reward, stress, cue reactivity, and impulsivity. Addictive behaviors can also affect the brain structure and function, altering its neurotransmitter systems and neural networks. The relationship between the default mode network and addictive behaviors has been investigated by several neuroimaging studies, using techniques such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, diffusion tensor imaging, DTI, and positron emission tomography, PET. These studies have revealed that addiction is associated with abnormal patterns of functional connectivity and structural integrity within and between the default mode network and other brain networks, such as the executive control network and the salience network. The executive control network is responsible for cognitive functions such as planning, decision-making, and inhibitory control. The salience network is involved in detecting and responding to salient stimuli, such as rewards, threats, and drug cues. The default mode network, executive control network, and salience network are dynamically interacting with each other, depending on the context and the task demands. In healthy individuals, there is a balance between these networks, allowing for flexible switching between internal and external attention. In addicted individuals, however, this balance is disrupted. There is evidence for reduced functional connectivity within the anterior default mode network, which is related to self-awareness and emotional regulation. There is also evidence for increased functional connectivity within the posterior default mode network, which is related to introspection and rumination. These changes may reflect impaired self-control, negative emotions, and craving present in addiction. Moreover, there is evidence for altered functional connectivity between the default mode network and other networks. For example, there is reduced connectivity between the default mode network and the executive control network, which may impair the ability to suppress drug-seeking behavior and to resist drug cues. There is also increased connectivity between the default mode network and the salience network, which may enhance the salience of drug-related stimuli and memories. Additionally, there is evidence for structural changes in the default mode network regions in addiction. For instance, there is reduced gray matter volume and white matter integrity in the medial prefrontal cortex and the posterior cingulate cortex the precuneus. These changes may reflect neurodegeneration or neuroadaptation due to chronic drug exposure. The relationship between the default mode network and addictive behaviors is complex and bidirectional. On one hand, addiction may cause dysfunction in the default mode network, affecting its connectivity and structure. On the other hand, pre-existing or genetic variations in the default mode network may predispose individuals to develop addictive behaviors. Furthermore, the relationship between the default mode network and addictive behaviors may be modulated by other factors, such as dopamine levels, drug type, abstinence duration, treatment interventions, and individual differences. In summary, the default mode network is a key brain network that is implicated in addiction. Understanding how addiction affects the default mode network may provide insights into the neural mechanisms underlying addictive behaviors and their consequences. Moreover, targeting the default mode network may offer new strategies for preventing or treating addiction. Does Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT, help regulate the activity of the default mode network? REBT is a form of psychotherapy that aims to help people change their negative thoughts and behaviors that contribute to their psychological distress. 
The model can help people cope with various mental health problems, such as depression, anxiety, phobias, obsessive-compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. It can also help people regulate their activity in the default mode network by teaching them skills such as mindfulness, relaxation, cognitive restructuring, and behavioral activation. Mindfulness is the practice of paying attention to the present moment with curiosity and openness, without judging or reacting to one's thoughts and feelings. Relaxation is the process of reducing physical and mental tension and stress by using techniques such as deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, or guided imagery. Cognitive restructuring is the technique of identifying and challenging irrational or distorted thoughts that cause negative emotions and behaviors. Behavioral activation is the strategy of increasing one's engagement in positive and meaningful activities that provide pleasure and satisfaction. By using these skills and many other skills, REBT can help people reduce their mind-wandering and self-referential thinking that are characteristic of the default mode network and increase their attention and awareness of their external environment and their internal sensations. It can also help people break the cycle of rumination and negative emotions that can fuel the default mode network activity and worsen their mental health. REBT can also enhance their memory and cognition by improving their executive functions and working memory that are often impaired by excessive default mode activity. Therefore, REBT can help regulate the activity of the default mode network by balancing its benefits and drawbacks for mental health and well-being. If this topic is something in which you are interested and would like to learn how to use rational emotive behavior therapy and its interventions to help address the symptoms due to the excessive default mode activity present in addictive behavior, both substance use disorders and behavioral addictions, be sure to check the website of the Albert Ellis Institute under professional trainings for an upcoming three-day certificate training program on using REBT to treat addictions.